All right, so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to create depth of field on a uh, Crazy Talk animator scene from within the program itself. Now, normally the easiest way to do this is, uh, quite frankly, to export it out in different layers and composite it in After Effects or any other nonlinear editing program where you can selectively adjust uh, the blurring on the background elements. In this case, we want to be able to do this uh, natively inside of Crazy Talk Animator. Uh, now, of course, you can't quite do it 100% natively. You're still going to use a third-party program, but it's really not that hard either because Crazy Talk does have uh, the, ab the ability to bridge into uh, you know, a bitmap editor of your choice, such as uh, uh, Photoshop. So what I'm going to do here is I've... Um, I started out by putting in a an instance of Kevin onto the stage. I also imported a background as a just a regular prop, uh, a desk, and uh, some kind of board type of thing. That way you can see three different elements on the stage. Uh, I'm going to start with this background. I'm going to select that background prop. I'm going to go into background composer, and you'll notice you'll have this uh, P PSD button here. So. Um, you can actually map this out to whatever uh, bitmap editing pro uh, program uh, that you want. Um, as long as it's installed in your computer, you should be able to launch it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just launch this real quick. Uh, I'm going to leave the resolution exactly the way it is. I'm not going to change anything. So once I do that, it launches into uh, Photoshop itself. Now, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to cancel out of this because I want to do a couple of things before I do this. Um, let me go out a little bit because I want to show you a little bit more of an advanced thing while I'm at it. Uh, let's zoom out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this background real quick. I'm just going to hold down the control button and just move that. That, that should give me uh, two copies. So I have two copies of this background here, and I'm just going to place these exactly in the same spot. Uh, I'm going to move that there. The idea is that they're in the same spot. Uh, OK, so basically, I'm going to take one of these elements, and now I'm going to go into the composer mode. And while I'm in the composer mode, I'm going to select it. I'm going to go to that uh, PSD editor thing. Um, so I'm going to launch it, send it. We'll wait a few seconds for Photoshop to run. It's going to bring that in. And the reason I duplicated it first is because I want to be able to modify this image, but I also want to keep a native copy that hasn't been modified. This will allow me to do more advanced things, uh, and I can kind of demonstrate to you uh, different ways of animating the uh, depth of field e effect. In many cases, you don't have to animate it, but you know, for the sake of being a little bit uh, thorough, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. So here I am inside of Photoshop. I'm just going to go to Filter, Blur. You can either use like Fast Blur, Camera Lens Blur, uh, Gaussian Blur is one that I usually kind of fall back to. Um, just kind of pick a number, something that gives you kind of the that the level of motion blur that you want and just click OK. Once it's blurred, all you have to do is save it. And once it's saved, it should update within Crazy Talk itself. Now, any further modifications, as long as it's open, I can co come back and do my more modifications here. And I should be able to uh, update that same image within CTA at any time. So let's go back out into the main program. So now you can see that my background is blurred. I'm going to go ahead and do this for the desk as well. I'm going to just hold down the control button and move that prop around a little bit. And the copy that I made, I'm going to go into composer mode. And I'm going to make a blurred version of that as well. And uh, nothing to it. Let's see here. I just have to make sure I select it. There it is. Filter, blur. Uh, let's do Gaussian blur. Let's just leave it by default. Click OK. And I'm just going to close these out. No, I don't want to save anything. 
it might not have updated it since I didn't save it. I'm gonna have to try it again. <laughs> Gotta pay attention to what you're doing. You have to hit save, otherwise it doesn't update it. So let's try that one more time here. Filter, uh, we gotta make sure we have the, the right layer selected. Okay, so we're gonna go to blur, Gaussian blur. It's blurring it to a three pixel radius. We're gonna hit save. So the, the act of saving it is what updates it inside of Crazy Talk, as you can see. So if you just close it without saving it, it's not going to actually apply that change. Uh, let's go ahead and do one more. And you don't have to duplicate these. I mean, obviously, if you're just going for a straight out, uh, you know, depth of field effect, uh, you know, for static scene, you just go ahead and blur them and get it over with. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to animate uh, the depth of field, which is why I'm duplicating these objects. So I've got it duplicated. I'll just roughly place it back into place. Launch the element inside of Photoshop. Make sure my layer is selected. Go to Filter, Blur, and uh, Gaussian Blur. Click OK. Save, and we should be good. All right, so we're going to get out of there. And uh, basically, I have two instances of every object here. One is blurred, one is not. So I just got to make sure I have the right ones here. Um, so the reason I made duplicates of this is because I also want to uh, kind of um, animate this depth of field effect. And uh, how I'm going to um, achieve this is uh, let's see here. Let's let's go into camera mode to kind of get a good camera placement here. And um, I'm gonna back up a little bit. So we're gonna make it so that as the camera moves in, the depth of field is going to be applied. Um, so here we go. This is our first frame. We're gonna make this maybe a. Let's make it nice and simple. Let's make it a 60 frame sequence. So we're going to go all the way to the last frame on a 60 frame sequence and we're going to zoom in. And as we zoom in, that's when we want the depth of field to really become apparent. Uh, so, so that should take care of the camera motion. So we have that. And um, so what I want to do next is I'm going to uh, come into the scene manager here. Uh, I'm just going to look for this whiteboard. I think this is, yeah, this is the blurred one. I'm just going to name it so I can keep better track of what's what. And let's see here. blur okay and this is my background background blur G table and board so now I have a better idea as to what is what on the stage so what I want to do is on frame one, I want to take my, my blurred elements and I'm going to hide them. I'm going to turn the opacity off. Okay, so we have a very sharp looking background because technically right now all we're doing is we're looking at the original non-modified props. And of course, on the last frame, uh, we want to be able to zoom in and we want to turn on that depth of field effect. So all we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to turn, we're going to make this completely uh, visible.
And of course, you can do the entire background as a single object, but if you want to maintain that parallax feel, then my recommendation is to do each object uh, individually. And uh, I'm going to kind of back up here. I'm going to go a few frames back, and uh, I'm going to turn off the visibility of those vector shapes so that they're not competing. Um, so I'm going to go here. Uh, this is frame 50. I'm going to go maybe halfway. It doesn't really matter. You just got to find your own way. Um, let's see here. Maybe somewhere uh, like around there. Frame. Let's keep it nice and even. Let's do frame 30. And then frame 30, I'm going to select my board. And I'm just going to toggle the, the property here a little bit just once, just so it can apply that keyframe. See here. We, we we go down. We go up. We just want to make sure there's a keyframe created because every time you 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 manipulate a property uh, of an object, it does automatically create a keyframe. So we're basically forcing it to create a keyframe at frame 30. But now, uh, so that do, those uh, that that keyframe contains uh, the visibility, the opacity at 100% for all those objects from frame one all the way to frame 30. Now on the last frame, I do want it to be completely invisible. So I'm gonna go back to these objects and uh, just uh, turn the opacity to zero at that point. And if we did everything correctly, uh, the effect should be pretty seamless. So let's take a look at it. We hit play. And there we go. As the camera zooms in, we focus more on our character, and everything else in the background became, um, uh, you know, it became uh, out of focus. Now, because we did each element uh, individually, um, that, that allows us to also animate the properties of each object individually. So, if we wanted to, for example, on this. Uh, on this table back here. Maybe we don't want that depth of field to be carried all the way out to the background. Uh, maybe we want that to, to be a little bit more visible. So we're gonna turn that to 100, but on the blur, we're gonna make me maybe make that less blurry. So there we go. Um, so that makes the table a little bit less blurry. Um, let's see. So you can interactively adjust the blurriness for each object because basically you have two objects connected next to each other. So you can kind of play around with it. And uh, that is one way for you to create depth of field within Crazy Talk with too much post-production work.